Is it finally safe to buy the stock of CrowdStrike? The cloud-based cybersecurity company came public to great fanfare in June of last year, a couple of months before the IPO window slammed shut. Initially, the stock roared higher, pricing at 34, trading 58 on its first day of trading, then surging all the way to $101 and change at its peak, August 20th. But then Wall Street lost its taste for turbocharged growth stories. And CrowdStrike's stock plummeted back to earth, seeing as low as 44 at its October lows. Now the company reported a terrific quarter a month ago, solid top and bottom line beat with strong guidance. But the stock sold off anyway because the lockup on insider selling was about to expire. But with CrowdStrike lockup expiration now out of the way, stock down at $50.75, you got to ask, is it time to buy? Let's take a close look with George Kurtz. He's the co-founder and CEO of CrowdStrike Holdings. Learn more about how his company's doing, where it's headed. Mr. Kurtz, welcome back to Mad Money. Thank you, Jim. It's a pleasure to be here, and I'm sorry I missed you when you were in California. Yeah, well, that won't happen again. We're going to see you. Now, George, I have to tell you, I'm very excited because your stock has come down, but it looks like your revenues are explosive. You're almost, uh, I can see a clear path to a billion dollars for your company. Well, you know, Jim, you said it. we had a great quarter. I think strong execution. Uh, we've got great technology and we're solving a really important problem. And that is keeping companies secure and stopping breaches. Um, so we were excited about the quarter and uh, delighted about the future. OK, so let's talk about uh, how you can get your half billion dollar run right now. But you're at your I've got to tell you that the revenue growth that I see is unfortunately unlimited because of things like what happened just last night. It, 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 is it possible to expect that the retaliation from Iran will come in the cyber world and not in the physical world? Well, it's certainly a possibility uh, in terms of kinetic and cyber retaliation. And I think what's important for uh, folks to realize is that this happens all the time behind the scenes. Obviously, we had a geopolitical event yesterday, which uh, was large, but these sort of determined adversaries, nation state adversaries, are constantly attacking our corporations and critical infrastructure 24 by 7. And most people really don't understand the extent of these, uh, these attacks and the damage that they can actually inflict. You use a, a, a particular method that has both artificial intelligence and is embedded in the cloud. Uh, what does the artificial intelligence say right now about nation states and what they're up to? Well, we detect uh, many of the nation state attacks and we prevent many of those. And the reason why we use artificial intelligence is unlike traditional legacy uh, antivirus vendors, um, artificial intelligence doesn't require signatures, meaning we don't have to ever see an attack before to know that it's actually bad. We look at the, the previous attacks, how they operated and their techniques, and we're able to program that into our Falcon platform so we can identify attacks that have never been seen before particularly uh, uh, attacks from nation state adversaries. I, I want people to understand, and you have an absolutely terrific deck from December 2019, We Stop Breaches, it's called, that you have a, an array of customers who love you. And the one that I thought was most interesting that I need to know more about, Pokemon, which my kids still play. What does Pokemon need CrowdStrike for? Well, as companies move to the cloud, it's really important to have great protection in the cloud. And that's what we're seeing as a great opportunity for CrowdStrike. When you have these organizations who may start on premise and move to the cloud, Pokemon has cloud infrastructure, uh, as many do, they need the best protection. And that's why they chose CrowdStrike. So like Pokemon and many of the others, we're really focused on delivering value to them and making sure that we keep their system safe and secure. Well, I have to tell you, I, there are also another element that people I've heard CrowdStrike from, and that's when President Trump named your company on his phone call with Ukraine's president and claimed that you're, uh, let's say, obscuring, I, I could say hiding, a Democratic National Committee server in Ukraine, and your company is Ukraine-based. Uh, what do you say to what sounds like uh, maybe just as not as informed comment about CrowdStrike? Well, Jim, this is a debunked conspiracy theory. Let me go through a few, a few facts with you first. Number one is we protect and we have the trust of many of the largest Global 2000 companies. Number two is we're headquartered in Sunnyvale, California, and we're publicly traded on uh, the NASDAQ. And number three is none of the founders are Ukrainian or have, any, or have any ties to Ukraine. So I just focus on the facts and just tell you that that's a debunked conspiracy theory, and it's just a lot of noise. And we're going to focus on protecting our customers. I'm so glad you did that because I don't want CrowdStrike to be known as somebody some company that's involved in any sort of thing that sounds nefarious. 
I think you guys have stopped a lot of nefarious behavior, which is terrific. I also want you to talk about uh, we spent a huge amount of time describing Workday for the HR cloud, ServiceNow for the service management cloud, Salesforce for the CRM cloud. You talk about the security cloud. How does that a category definition uh, help our investors, our people to choose your stock? Well, we think we're one of the companies that really will be a cloud pillar. And the companies that you mentioned, whether it's Workday, ServiceNow, Salesforce, are cloud pillars in, in my view. And before CrowdStrike, there really wasn't a security cloud. You had many of the other legacy players, whether it was antivirus or firewall players, uh, that were out there. But no one built a in the, uh, basically a cloud platform from the ground up delivering security, which is what we focused on. And the reason we've seen such tremendous growth is because of our modular approach. Once you have our single agent architecture, uh, you have the ability to add new modules without adding any new agents. And we store all that data and we create new workflows and use our AI to be able to solve some really hard problems. People want security delivered from the cloud, not only because it's, it's better and has better efficacy, but it also consolidates agents. No one wants more of these agents on their endpoints or their workloads uh, than they need to. And we found a way to be able to consolidate that and not only protect on-premise technologies and servers, but also those cloud workloads, which are exploding uh, with the large cloud providers. So well, we're excited about what we're doing. All right, well, that, I'm glad you say it's exploding because I did want to ask you whether there's uh, room for everybody. You know Carbon Black uh, had a, a merger with a company we like very much. Uh, it, 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 are things getting crowded? Uh, are, uh, is, is there still enough business to go around or is it all share, is it share take when you have something like that? Well, w we see it as a natural evolution. Either you, know, you have to adapt or you die. And I think a lot of these companies got sold off because they needed to. Uh, mm -hmm. And in our opinion, we've created the cloud platform. And I think our success has, has really uh, forced a lot of these companies to rethink what they were going to do in the future. From our standpoint, we haven't seen a better competitive environment. Uh, we know the cloud is the future, and we know customers like our technology, love our technology, and we're solving really hard problems for them. And I think the cloud workloads represent really an amazing opportunity for CrowdStrike to be able to protect those workloads as they continue to proliferate. And I should mention as part of this $500 million uh, run rate, the annual recurring revenue here is extraordinary, and it also includes Amazon Web Services, which is very important. George, I want to thank you so much for coming on. What a great level to get long crowd strike. Great to see you, sir. Great. Thank you. Okay, that, that's George Kersey, co-founder and CEO of CrowdStrike. Guys, we told you to wait until the stock goes down. We do not suddenly, when it goes down, back away. This one is right. Stick with Kramer. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.